hello, hello. Over the weekend, um, I had a pretty good run with Yog Moth in a challenge. Um, I ended up in the top four, and um, we're gonna talk about the list, and we're gonna I'm gonna do a little intro to the list, and we're gonna go over the replays. This is gonna be a pretty long little video about um, the deck. So, uh, Yog Moth, uh, a lot has changed, obviously. Lord of the Rings has come out, and Halfling is crazy. Uncountable Yawgmoth, Uncountable Gris, just uh, just Chef's Kiss. These, this is just a really good card. It doesn't die. It's a one two. Doesn't die to uh, Ren and Six, and Ren and Six is everywhere. But the One Ring is an interesting card. Uh, Bowmaster is crazy. I only had three, so. I had three, so I was like, oh, I should play three. But if you notice, I'm at 61 cards, which is kind of sus, but it is what it is. Because I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut the Bowmaster. I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut the One Ring and do it like this. But if you notice, I've cut Dross Messenger. We've cut Evolutions. There's no, you know, we're going a lot less toolboxy and a lot more just Bowmasters and One Rings. You know, we're keeping it Lord of the Rings style. We even have... I didn't mess with the lands, but... So also, one thing you notice is I got rid of the Nurturing Peat Land. And I added this extra fetch land and this for the two Peat Lands. Because the thing is, when you're playing the One Ring, you never want to just lose random life. And not only do you not want to lose random life, but you don't ever want to be in a position where you give up your lands. You really need to... The one thing with the One Ring is that it benefits you from just dumping your hand every turn. So, like, if you ramp to this early, you just dump your hand, dump your hand, dump your hand, and this will refill your hand. So, this card is very interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I got rid of the one Endurance in the main deck. I put all the Endurances in the sideboard. Um, I don't really need this card anymore. I think, I think Rhinos is going to be gone because Teferi is around. Teferi is going to be... Teferi and Four Color are going to be the best deck for a long time now. So, uh, Rhinos is in trouble. So, I think we can get rid of this. But, I think this is a sideboard I'm going to use moving forward. I'm probably going to get rid of this and probably have it be the fourth Bowmaster. Or just move this Bowmaster to the sideboard. I, I don't know. I'm not really sure yet. I have to play more games. But anyway, this is a list we started with. And... Um, it's 61, and you have to understand that I played this, I went in this with, I just want to test shit. I want to test Bowmaster, and I want to test the One Ring. Uh, that's why I went with 4 and 4, and you'll see during this event, my sideboarding is super sketchy, and I go up to 62, 63 cards. It's, it's really sketchy, it's really bad. But I'm just testing stuff, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Just trying to see how the new cards go, so let's get started. So, round... So, here it is. Uh, round number one. Match number one. So... Uh, ba -ba -ba. So, this hand's kind of... Kind of sus. Not the best, obviously. Two young wolves. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I guess we could keep it, right? So... All right, so one thing you have to know immediately, right? You can see the Gigantha. So this is obviously the Death and Taxes list, or uh, Grixis Death Shadow. Now, one thing to note is over the weekend, uh, you, you always want to know what's going on in the meta a little bit. So we have this challenge, this challenge, four-color Omnath, four-color Omnath, Look at, look at, Omnath, 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 Omnath. Welcome to the future. But if you look at this challenge on, on this is the Friday night challenge, the first challenge. If you look at it, it was won by this Grixis Death Shadow list that's playing basically Breach. It's just Grixis Death Shadow <clears throat> with Bowmasters and Breach. So... Uh, you always want to know your meta. So this is what we're playing against, probably. When you see, uh, when you see this, 
So when you see this, you just immediately got to think this. Because you have the Gigantha, you have the DRC, right? Because Gigantha's a bit of a tell. But anyway, those playing modern, you got to know this is now a Grixis Death Shadow deck. So, all right. Let's get let's keep going. So we obviously just shock ourselves. I drew this. I probably should have just played this. I got a forest. But I always want to prioritize double black, so I guess it was right. Alright, so now they thought sees us, they take our grist, they don't want to attack, they get choked up on one land, which is obviously great for us. So Bowmaster killed it. Like, look at look at how crazy Bowmaster is. Just murder the DRC. So good, right? It's just crazy. Just a dude. Look, now, look at this for Cord, too, right? It's two bodies for Cord, which is just bananas. And we get to kill an unangry DRC. Just nuts. This game doesn't last very long. They just concede, right? So the Bowmaster killed. They must have missed their second land. And now we go land, young wolf, young wolf, untap cord for yog father, and then bleh. So that was the easiest game of magic I've ever played in my life. They conceded on turn three, they never hit their third land. We got the bowmaster, we're killing them. Alright, so here obviously, I don't know that it's Grixis Death Shadow, but I kind of know. Alright, so let's go to game number two. Now, first things first, let's check out the sideboarding. So, I sideboarded out of the One Rings. And I bought in... Uh, see, I'm at 62 here. This is what I'm saying. I was I went wild this game. So, I went... Um, I went in Endurance, 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 and in the Scavenging Ooze. Right? So, I cut all the One Rings... And then I went, in, I brought in the four endurances and the scavenging use. Right, so, uh, yep. Four endurances, one scavenging use, and that's 60, 61 cards. I This is what I'm saying. I was just trying to shit, tr trying, to, trying to figure out how stuff goes, just trying to mess around. So this hand's okay. It's kind of thought seize proof. So they delta blah. So we play halfling, blah blah blah. Not very exciting. They kill my halfling. They play land tapped. So here we have a lot of options here. I'm pretty sure. Let me just go bonk 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 bonk. We could have played the stranger geist and gotten in there, but you always want to just progress, progress, progress your board. I think. Let's see what our opponent end up, ends up doing here. Bolt the halfling. See, I don't know about this kill. I guess, I guess they had a counterspell or something. But like, killing this halfling, I already have a million mana. But whatever. So they kill our halfling. I don't block here because I don't want my thing to be bolted because I kind of want to have a board presence. But may maybe I should just blocked. But. I didn't really want to get my wall roots bolted. Because if, if I get my wall roots bolted, I can't play a 4-drop this next turn. So. It's always so random when this thing pauses. Uh, the replay thing is so, so broken. Alright, so we drew a swamp. They bowmaster us. Ugh. So now we have three lands in our hand. Obviously, this isn't good. Um, Express Federation. Blah, blah, blah. They kill my thing. They attack. I get a Dried Arbor to block the DRC here. Which, maybe I was supposed to block the bowmaster. But I had boarded out the rings. So... I was like, I don't need the bone. I don't need if if I had the ring still in the deck, I would have taken the Dryad Arbor and blocked the Bowmaster for sure. But without the One Rings, the DRC is a bigger clock. Like I was surprised that they didn't have Delirium anyway. And if I did kill the Bowmasters, it would have given them Delirium. So I was like, all right, let's just uh, ignore the Bowmaster. 
for now. Just because of the one ring. But it might have been better to kill the Bowmaster with the Dried Arbor. Uh, let's see. So we draw a High Arc here. Obviously not great. And our opponent. Expressive Iterations. This is not good for us. Obviously we're gonna we're just gonna get they thought sees us, they see nothing. We block now, they have another bowmaster, kill our guy here. I'm just gonna warp speed through the rest of this game because we get draw land. Our opponent's like, oh perfect. They express see one, two, three expressive iterations. That means you're dead, you know? So now I gotta block the army. Why is it being why is it making me say okay? So I block the army. Obviously, we are so far behind here. And we draw. Why is it it's so slow aggress? It's not a bad draw. So obviously play the Gabamaya, play the Grist. Grist gets countered. Play the Yavamaya. Yavamaya because they they know about it from the Thought Seas. And so we're looking pretty pretty sad shape here. Pretty sad shape here. So they attack, blah blah blah. We block. We block with the orcish. We block the orcish. It's so crazy how it's going so slow. So then they play Breach and Bolt, Bolt, Bolt. I'm at nine, so Breach just kills me. They put me out of my misery that game. I was not winning this game. So it would have been nice to have drawn like a one ring or a sideboard card, but like uh, we didn't do those things. We just drew garbage, so we just flooded out. No Yawgmoths. No nothing. All right. So, game number three. Game number three here. All right. So, let's see if I did anything different sideboarding. Um. <laughs> so, I have two one rings in. And I cut a wall of roots. So, I have four endurances in. Two one rings uh, scavenging news, and I'm at 63 cards. So I added two cards to the deck. I added an endurance and a scavenging ooze, and we cut a wall of roots. Uh, the thought being that wall of roots isn't that great. You want to speed up and, like, have one drops to speed up yourself. That was the thought process. But this is what I'm saying, where I just messed around just to see how things work. Because you definitely want endurances against any deck that plays Drown the Lock. All right, so this is our chance to go first. Let's get to our let's get to our hand. All right, so this hand isn't great. I don't remember if I keep it or not. I don't think that I do, because these two cards are kind of dead. Because we have black, we don't really have. I don't know. Maybe I keep this. Do I keep this? I do keep it. This hand's obviously kind of sketchy, but you start off, yeah, obviously start off with this. You can fetch, now, if I was worried about Blood Moon, I would fetch out a basic forest here, but we're not, so we just, and they play this DRC, and then the Bowmaster just, plink, plink, so bad. It's really hard to play 1-1s, X-1s in this format, so we just, plinky, plink. There could have been a way where we, like, sandbag this a little. But then they end up getting a free surveil, and there's no reason to do that. So, let's see what they do. They just play land. So, now we have an interesting choice here. Let's see what we draw. Bonk. Mm -hmm. Why did it go so slow like that? Sometimes it just goes slow. I don't understand why it's going slow. Every time you move this, you're supposed to move through a priority. Alright, so we drew a halfling. So they killed our thing. I played a scavenger goose. 
and I ate a DRC. Because we didn't have enough green to go like this plus this. So I felt like scavenging would be the best thing to do. Let's see what they end up doing. It thought sees me. Take a cord. And they kill my scavenging. Sad days. Alright. So now we just play both of these. Smash. Boink, boink, blah. So let's see what our opponent does. Death Shadow. Hurst. Now Hurst is annoying here, but we have... The big thing is that they tapped out, so no counter spells. We know we can get a Yogg next turn. So we do just that. So obviously here we just get our Yogg Moth. Cord for our Yogg. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Get our Yogg. Now. I want to start shrinking this because we haven't made our land drop for the turn, right? So, like, this thing's tapped. So, we might as well start shrinking this a little. Making a land drop would be nice, right? It's important to progress your board. So, I'm okay shooting this into this. Which is what I think I do. Yeah, make through this. Didn't really hit a land drop. I don't really see the point. See, I don't really see the point in sacking this, which is sacking a land drop to try and find a land drop. Maybe I would do it if we had another one drop in our hand and we could go, like, land replace. But we, we didn't, so we're just going to chill here, right? Just throw away that extra thing for a piece of whatever. So now they start. Notice they didn't use the Hurst on us. That's a bit of a tell to me that they have a Drown in the Lock, that they didn't use the Hurst here. But we'll... Pretty sure they just drown my thing. Alright, the expressive iteration. I think they hit a drown off of this. Which makes me very sad. Yeah, there's the drown. So my Urborg cost me here. Because it let him it let him uh get me here. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is, right? So they got to the the Urborg used, worked against me this this game. It's possible that you don't need the Urborg without your off messenger, but that's a, another time. All right, so this thing's a five five now. So obviously, we probably should draw. We should probably shoot shoot the halfling into this because then the question becomes: Do we shoot this into this? Because the 5-5 five is pretty scary. So let's let's see what we end up doing. Pretty sure I shoot this into this. Yeah. I just want to draw more cards so that, like, I can get to the next Yogg. Or a way to kill them because they're only at 7. And then, so we're looking here. Another... And, and if I hit an Endurance too, I could blank this Drown, which would be the sickest sick. Uh, so I'm there is an option here, right? If I do shoot this on this, then I can get an Endurance. And then with Endurance, I could blank this Drown in the Lock by pitching the Wall Roots. So the potentially, there is a value to digging here one more card. Because I have 48 cards, so like a 1 in 12, 1 in 12 chance of just hitting an Endurance or something like that. That's obviously not the perfect math. but So there is maybe a reason to do it, which I do. Take the 1 in 12 chance of just winning the game here if you hit an Endurance. So they get rid of the 2, blah, blah, blah. I hit OK. I'm so conditioned to hit OK. Alright, let's see if we hit an Endurance here. Endurance? Another Yogg. Yogg's a great draw, obviously. So we just, you know, let our guy die. We get hit for 3. But... Not the end of the world, right? So, here, jamming out the Yawgmoth doesn't really do anything. So we need to take a setup turn. So we go one. Play this, and then we Geist him. 
And we hit him to four. The reason we're hitting him to four is so the Blood Artist can... Blood Artist become a threat where we can, like, gang block a Death Shadow. So we'll just... They play DRC. They express Viteration. They attack me. I take it. But if you notice, I removed the counter from the Wall of Roots. The reason I did that at the end of their turn was because I have the Blood Artist in my hand. And it's possible I need to suicide this Wall of Roots to ping them the final point of damage here. So that's why I removed a counter from this. So we drew a Yogmoth. This is a pretty good feeling here. Because we have six mana, which is enough for both of these two. So... They have Drown Up too. So obviously this spot's pretty tricky. Uh, I run out the Blood Artist first, I think, to bait out a Counterspell. I don't remember what I do here. All I know is that the replay program is being annoying right now. Alright. So they play the Blood Artist. They dress down, right? And then we just go to the end step and kill them. Right. So when they played the dress down, we knew shields were down. So we just go to the end step, and then just go boop, 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 boop. And we didn't have to test the unlicensed Hurst. So I shot the hot, I shot the one, two, and then this at the DRC, which killed it. So one in the graveyard, two in the graveyard, three in the graveyard, kills the DNC, which DRC, which is four. So they are only at four. So we won. Okay. Uh, let's do around number two. Three games as well. Snapcaster Bolt. Alrighty. So, this hand's okay, right? We've got a Bowmaster. We've got a Young Wolf. We have one, two, three. We have a nice little curve, and we have a stupid artist here who's just chilling with us. So, they are going to play Ragavan, which is, like, perfect for us, right? This is like, oh, beautiful. This is perfect. So, obviously, we can't... So, obviously, at this point, we think they're scam, right? So, I don't really want to shock myself here. Just go... Or shock, boom, young wolf. Which I do. I, I guess I do. I was just debating if I want to start with the Baseju. Right? But I guess shocking is the way. So we just play the young wolf. Alright. So what's our opponent do? They play a void walker here, which is just so annoying. So maybe I was not supposed to throw away my young wolf to block this void walker. Because I have the Bowmaster. But. I ended up doing it. Maybe I was just supposed to keep that in play. And then just go Bowmaster kill that. So I ended up. Alright. So we play out two dudes here to do a setup turn. And then they Bowmaster kill my guy. Attack me. Now we draw this, so we go probably Grist here. Alright, so we just go for the Ninja Bowmaster. But the problem with the Ninja Bowmaster is killing their Bowmaster gives them access to their stupid Unearth cards. So, it's really a bit of a liability to do this. Right, because they attack like this. And then we go Bowmaster block your bowmaster and then the like undying thing and that just blows like if you kill a bowmaster and they have an undying thing see we just we just get taken to the cleaners of this game i'm just gonna turbo speed it because we just get destroyed this game we got to kill the void walker because we're at nine and now we can like block with the young wolf and they just go all for the face nine, then they have an undying thing for this Ugh. So, there's not really much we could do about this. 
Why is it paused during the fast replay? So we're doing like a fast replay. So this is obviously just an absolute blowout, right? I think I may have conceded. Oh yeah, I conceded. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, I'm dead. I have a blood artist. This is putting me, this is going to come back and play. This is three, six, five. We're going to five. This thing's going to come back, put us to four, right? There's no draw. I mean, we could have drawn a one ring. But the thing is, one ring doesn't save you when your opponent has Bowmaster. So we just got rolled by Scam there. Just rolled by Bowmat and, like, the Malakir Rebirth. That hurt. That hurt. So, game two. Let's take a look at how he sideboarded. So, I did a lot of sideboarding here. I cut a high arc. I cut high arc. I cut wall roots. I cut all of these creatures because I saw Voidwalker and Bowmasters. These cards just aren't that good. Like a Fury tagging these things. I cut a wall roots. Cut cords. Right? I cut two of the one rings. So we cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. And we brought in four Thoughtseize. Thoughtseize is important, as you'll see in this game. And four Endurances, and we brought in the Scavenging Ooze. So we brought four Endurances, four, scaven or four Thoughtseizes, and one Scavenging Ooze. So we brought in nine cards, and we cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We cut a bunch of cards that are not good against Fury. All right, so this hand's really good. You want to start off with the Thoughtseize, and look, if we didn't have that Thoughtseize, we would have got Grief scammed. They would have gone Grief, Pitch Voidwalker, and they would have wrecked our hand, but they didn't get a chance to do that because of our Thoughtseize. I think Thoughtseize is the best weapon against Scam. Because their deck is just so bad if they don't have that gimmick. So we drew Yogg, which is perfect here. So we play the Halfling. Maybe I was supposed to put a Strangergeist in play. But the problem with the Strangergeist is we saw the Bowmaster. So Bowmaster could just get the Geist. After, so it was just tricky. Voidwalker. No big deal. So this next turn... So we have a choice here, right? We can... Here's an issue with the with the Halfling. Because this is a Halfling, I can't go Geist Geist. But you don't really want to go Geist Geist into a Voidwalker. Especially when they have Bowmaster. Because they could just Bowmaster one of these. So I'm pretty sure I play Yawgmoth here. Alright. Play Yawgmoth. No drawing. And then we'll set ourselves up for doing stuff next turn. Say so Thought sees us. They take the cord. We get hit for three. No big deal. Okay, so we have to remember that they have what they've used. They use their Verdant. They didn't use their Bloodstained Mire. So they have a Bowmaster in hand and a Grief in hand. So we have to be careful drawing cards here because we can get Bowmastered. So we drew another Strangler Geist. Which, in a perfect world here, we could go one, two, Strangler Geist, proliferate. But it gets really weird because the Halfling doesn't produce colored mana for a Strangler Geist. Or the Halfling doesn't produce colored mana for Yawgmoth. So here's an example of the Halfling being bad. But at the same time that it's bad... It's still good because they can't Bowmaster it, right? So even when this card's bad, it's still good. So let's see what we end up deciding to do. Pretty sure I play the Strangaroo Geist. And then I go to attack. Knowing that they will flash in the Bowmaster. Alright, so here comes a Bowmaster. So the Bowmaster is going to shoot the Strangler Geist, obviously. So now we can kill the Bowmaster. 
The one issue is when the Bowmaster gets killed by this, it sees, it sees the draw. So they're going to get a 2-2 two -two here, which is really annoying. Right, so now it sees the other draw. I guess it doesn't see the other draw. Does it? No, it doesn't. That's weird. All right, it does not see the other draw. So they're not gonna block anything. So now the question becomes, do I do anything else here? And the answer is no. I wonder if I'm supposed to shoot this now to try and hit a land drop. I do. I shoot that now. I want to set up a turn because I know they have the grief next turn, right? So I want to set up a turn where I can proliferate this thing to kill it. And I really want to hit another land drop to play one of these guys. I had the Yavamaya, so like anything that comes down here is going to be another dude, which would have been good, but didn't didn't get there. These are still good cards. I'm happy to see. So we know they have a Grief, and we know they have the Bloodstained Mire. So at this point, we know their hand exactly. So guess what they're going to do next turn. Bloodstained Mire, they griefed Argrist. They didn't attack. They didn't attack with the Voidwalker, and they played the Grist, and then they killed our Yawgmoth. That was a pretty good turn for them. So now, we drew a land here, and this is just double strength group guys to kill the Grist. Or one at the Grist, one at them. Alright, so one at the Grist, one at them. So we don't know any cards in their hand. This hurts. This was really, really bad, obviously. Very bad. You put us to seven, but we're winning this race, right? We're hitting for four, they're hitting for three. This was a crazy draw. Obviously, this draws bananas. Bananas draw. Uh, I don't eat anything yet. We're just going to hold up the activation. Just holding up the activation. And they concede, because Scavenge Goose, the Sheriff, is here. This card is a Sheriff, and they can't fuck with it. You can't fuck with the long arm of the law. So anyway, obviously we just eat. We want to wait. Because you don't want to get, you know, whatever. So you just wait with this, and then activate at the end of turn. Hit this, hit this. And then untap, and we have a life gain plus a million guys. And they must have two undying things in their hand or something. All right, or they have a Fury and no red card or land or whatever. So this ended up working out. Sir, sure. let's check out game three versus Scam. Um, so this hand is not. This hand's pretty good, right? Got a halfling. Got a thing. They played a ley line of the void here. So we're just gonna go Forest Halfling. Beautiful. So what do they do? They grief me, but they don't scam it. I was like, oh shit, I lose. Because they're gonna grief scam me. But they didn't have the scam. So we just Play another halfling and beat down. Oh, I didn't attack. I didn't attack because I didn't want to attack into Bowmaster. With a, like, ping your guy, block with the token, and kill it. So that's why I didn't attack there. Bowmaster. Alright. Uh, let's see what they do for turn three. Season Pyro... Now I got a black source there. I could have got uh 
I could have got a dried arbor. But I didn't think I needed it yet. And I could still get the dried arbor with this. But maybe this was supposed to be a dried arbor. So I can go halfling, halfling, ding, thing. I can go one, two, three, four, play the yog. But the, my, my problem was that I had... That meant that I had one, two, three... Three out of my one, two, three, four, five mana that could be killed. And then, like, if they found a way to go fury and then scam they would kill my entire board you know so i was a little leery of doing that so i did i got i got the overgrown tomb but that might have been a coward's move and i could have potentially gotten a, a uh dried arbor there but i didn't maybe i should have we drew the endurance which is good endurance will stop a fury scam so we just go pretty sure we just go play yogmoth play verdant pass I don't really feel any reason to, like, start doing stuff now. Because if I, like, throw away resources to kill this or look for another thing, like, I could just get run over. Like, I could just get furied out of this game. So, they bolt a halfling. So, obviously, we just shrink the thing, obviously. We can't let that kind of violence abide. Or stand, or whatever you want to call it. So they, I think they were trying to dump their hand for a season Pyromancer. Yeah. They play a season. Draw. And now they have two cards in hand. Now I'm pretty sure I do get Dried Arbor here. Alright. Because they showed me they don't have a way to deal with my stuff. Right? Because they didn't have a Fury. All right, so here we have a lot of stuff we could do, but there's no point in committing too much of our board away when they have a ley line of the void out. We can't really do much comboing anyway, so we just kind of want to just build our board, build our board, and then get to a position where we can rock them. So I shoot this one, right? So then I can get into position where I can go land, proliferate both of these down. So we hit a halfling. Now we play enough land here. So this way we can play an endurance. And we can proliferate. Right? So we can play the endurance. We can play the proliferate. And I'm pretty sure I hit him with Yogg here. Okay. So now if they attack, we can proliferate. Thought sees. So obviously we're just going to play the Endurance. Blink, blink, blink. Play the Endurance. So this was a mistake. I just punted there. I, I did it really fast, but I punted. With the trigger on the stack, with the Endurance trigger on the stack, I wanted to kill one of their things so it would get shuffled away, right? I did that. I sacrificed the... Dryad Arbor to shoot and get rid of one of these things with the Endurance. But the problem is that let me draw a card and it let me get my Yawgmoth Thought Seized, which I shouldn't have done. Right? Putting this and shuffling this away with the Endurance was not worth getting whatever card I had Thought Seized. So this was, this was a sketchy play there where I let them Thought Seize me and take the card that I drew off killing the Season Pyro, I don't think it was worth it. I think I should have just put this in play, uh, let the thing resolve, let them have two Pyromancers, and then not get anything taken from Thoughtseize. So that was that's a tricky one. That's a perception thing. But I probably should just let the Thoughtseize resolve, and then after the Thoughtseize is resolved, then I should have shot this thing. And then I would have a Yawgmoth in my hand in case I had a way to deal with it. But they don't. Uh, and then I said, that was so dumb. Uh, I'm so stupid. I even set them up to proliferate. And then I just let them thought seize me. So. It's okay though. Like, the good news is you so violently ahead. It really doesn't matter. Which is, they're right. 
right? Because they have nothing, so. I play the Wall of Roots. I attack with everything. They rebirth. They go to rebirth. I just, I mean, this game's over. We're going to do it at warp speed. They play Voidwalker and concede. So, uh, we won that game. Pretty sweet. So now let's go to game number three. So the good news is you're finally ahead. It doesn't really matter. All right. So now we're in game number three. Let's take a look at how we sideboarded. Same thing. One, two, three. F I On the draw, right? So now I'm on the draw. So I took out these guys. One, two, three. Because these guys are so bad into Bowmaster, right? Bow, Bowmaster just destroys these. So I, I cut one Young Wolf, one Strangroot Geist. The reason I cut the Young Wolves is because I feel like they sideboard out Ragavans against me in games two and three. So I feel good. And we boarded out a bunch of things that die to Bowmaster. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we sideboard out nine cards. We brought in four Thoughtseize, four Endurance, and one Scavenging Goose. And that's our nine for nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So they have Void again. And they have this again, which is... Oh, wait, hold on. Am I on game two? What game is this? Is this game two? Or game three? Oh, I loaded... I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Let's look at game three. All right. Uh... What? this game go the same way? This is the same hand I had in game one, right? In game two? The whole thing's already here. That's very weird. Uh, Alright, let's try it. Let's close the event. Let's go constructed premiere event. Round two, game number three. Huh. Yeah, that's weird. Well, I don't have game number three. It's just a replay of game number two. I'm just, I've confused myself. Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm dumb. I'm dumb. So that was our game three. We, I'm stupid. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, let's go to round three. So that was the win. So now we're playing against new buck, noob. I don't know. I don't know how to say their name. So this hand's okay, right? That was a good draw. Alright, so they're playing Swamp. Ring. So, seeing Swamp in this, I kind of think Coffers. Right? Kind of feels like they're playing a Coffers deck. So we're going to surprise Bowmaker. Surprise Bowman's. We're going to do surprise Bowmasters at some point. They play a Karn here. Which is good. Bowmaster is so good here. So they wish for a Stone Brain, I'm pretty sure. The Stone Brain. So we just play the Bowmaster. Kill the Karn. And then we go 
now we have a lot of options here, but I think Grist plus attack, that guy is the best. Grist plus kill the Karn, hit them for one. So now... Uh, they're obviously playing some kind of coffers control. Stone Brain, and down goes Yogmoth. Down goes Yogmoth, but we drew Bowmasters, plus we have the One Ring here. So, in the olden days, I would have courted for Dross Messenger just to start beating down harder. But, now we just gotta progress our board a little bit. Halfling, hold up the Bowmaster... They made a comment about four rings. I'm like, I'm 61. I'm just fucking around. Uh, the right number is always odd. Uh, just a little trash talk. A little friendly banter. So each opponent sacrifices a planeswalker. We're trying to hold up the bowmasters here to get them. But they just killed our land. So we just play a bowmaster, hurt them. They fatal pushed me. So I courted for a blood artist. So that way, if they wipe the board, right, I can have a Blood Artist that just does a bunch of damage. If they Damnation me, I'll have the Blood Artist. So now we just ring it up. I left the half of this thing back, and I just stack with everything. So... Bonk, 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 bonk. They kill this guy, gain a million life. Draw a card. So we go to 10. Now the ring just pulls us so far ahead. Well, that doesn't pull us very far ahead. But if you notice here, right, there's no reason to play these bad boys out. It doesn't do anything, right? They're just lambs to the slaughter if they have a damnation. So I don't play these two out, and then I just attack and play the land. This land gets Dried Arbor, and what do they do? Karn. Karn gets Engineered Explosives. Which blows up all my zeros, which kind of sucks. So now we get the Dryad Arbor. And our ring. Our ring's just going to draw us a million cards. The ring's dead now because of the Karn. But we can just go guy, guy. I should have got a Dryad Arbor here. But we just go one, two, exalted attack for three. Yeah, got him. So we got him. Okay, now this next game has the wildest ending I've ever seen. This game was crazy, and I can't believe I lost this game. I absolutely cannot believe that I lost this game. All right, so we mulliganed here. So we have Blooming Marsh. Bah, bah, bah. So I'm starting with a High Arc because High Arc's better for casting stuff next turn. I guess it doesn't really matter. They kill the guy. They have this. So we're just going to go board development, play these two. They killed our thing. Rude. This is just a lot of them killing our things. Killed our guy. Grist time. Uh, what do they do? Draw with the relic. So they've gone through two relics already. One relic. They missed their land drop they missed their turn four land drop which is not what this deck wants to do so now we just strangle geist plus attack 
We hit a bonus grist. So because I hit bonus grist, right? I didn't swing, and then I saved the cord. And then they, right? Did you guys catch that? I plus the grist first. I was like, oh, shit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Because I had a token from before, right? So then when they went to Fatal Push, one of the things, I just courted for Yogg and then sacked the thing in response. Bonus, bonus Grist for the win, yeah. Because I had one, two, three tokens and then two fetch lands, right? I had one, two, three, four. I had one insect in play. I plus got two insects. So that's one, two, three, four. F and that makes seven for Yogg. Then when they go to kill insect, we just cord for the Yogg sack, the one that they got. Night's Whisper. So we got Thoughtseize here. So, I'm so far ahead this game, I don't remember how I lose. But I'm pretty sure I start with a Thoughtseize here. Alright, so what's their hand? This is their hand, right? Which is pretty, pretty good hand. So, I'm pretty sure I could win the game here. We have, like, mostly everything we need. So I start drawing some cards, right? Draw... Draw. 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 I stop here, right? I could have kept going. But this is game two, and I forgot how I sideboarded. I, I cut one, in, one of these. One of these for thought seizes. I cut... One, two, three. One, two, where are we going? I should have gone over sideboarding. But I basically cut these dorks. Alright, so now we're just going to attack. I could have kept going here. But. I didn't keep going. Guess I go a little bit. Alright, there's the blood artist, so I have to stop, right? Have to stop. So they play the ring. They play the ring. They play the one ring here. Now this is where I mess up, right? They grief me. They take the blood artist. So my blood artist is gone. I don't have any endurances. And they're one ringed. So, I fuck this up. I have them dead to rights here, but I mess it up, right? So, this is a really complicated turn, and this is one of the craziest things I've ever, like, check out this turn. It gets crazy. So, Grist Ultimate doesn't target. Each point loses life, which gets around the one ring bullshit, right? So all we have to do is get 13 cards into the graveyard. Can we do that? Can we put seven creatures into the graveyard? And then they have the one ring here, right? So the one ring is going to deal them one damage. So we only need to put 12 creatures in the graveyard. So... 
this is where I mess up, right? So we have one, two, three, four. But we can proliferate stuff. And we can, like, draw and do stuff, right? But we only have eight life to do it. So it gets tricky here, right? So this is a really tricky spot. But what I'm going for is to put 12 is to put 12 or 13 points of damage on them so they die to the one ring. But the problem is I don't play the bowmaster, right? So I end up doing a bunch of stuff here. So we play first things first, we shoot this. Can't thought seize them. But we got to start just playing and sacking things, right? So now we just play. Now we just want to put everything into the graveyard. So play another wall of roots. Play the halfling here. Right, so now I want to start killing things, but I only have five life. So I need to be careful. Right? So, I need to sack this wolf, shoot this, sack this, shoot this, sack the wolf. Kill, like, I need to kill things. So I do that. Shoot the halfling. Sack the young wolf. Sack the wall of roots. Sack the wall of roots. So now I'm at one here, right? And this is where I F up. This is where I mess up. Right here. Because now I proliferate and discard a creature and bump up the ring to two. Right? What I needed to do here was... Play the Bowmaster. Right? Because if I play the Bowmaster... See, I proliferate the Yawgmoth. Instead of just doing 10 to them and playing a Bowmaster, which is what I should have done. No, because then they just play the Children and I die. Right, because this doesn't kill them. I guess maybe I spent too much green mana playing creatures. Where I should have saved a green mana, right? So I could have had nine... I could have had... This is how I messed up. I played the one... I should have saved one extra green mana here. And not played the second wall of roots. And then I could have proliferated the wall of roots. And proliferated the ring up. And discarded a creature card. Well, I would have discarded the wall roots. And then I would have, could have played the Bone Master. So I should have thought about this in the beginning of the turn. I ended up using too much green mana. And I can't go... I needed to go Bone Master plus Proliferate here. To put this at 2. Then I would only have to do 11 damage to them. And I have 10 creatures here, right? So I end up then I proliferate. I proliferate the ring up. And then I ultimate grist. I do 11 to them. They go to 2. They have a 1 ring. I should have done something where I have the bowmaster in play. But it doesn't matter. And they get out of this, right? They get out of this situation. Right, so now if I had the blood artist, that but they thought he's the blood artist, so now they should die. But they get really lucky; they draw two cards here, and they hit the stupid. They hit a stupid 
March of Wretched Sorrow. Right? And then they go to six, they go to three, and then they play a Shieldred and I die. So, that was really lucky on their part to hit a March of Wretched Sorrow off two cards. But maybe I should have thought about this turn more. So I could have had the Bowmaster in play. But they did have a Fatal Push, right? So they could have Fatal Pushed the Bowmaster. And then drawn the March. But then they wouldn't have been able to play the Shieldred, right? So it's tricky, but if they don't play the Shielder, then they play the other One Ring. I don't know. It gets weird, right? This was a weird situation, but I lost this game, which was crazy to me. Absolutely bananas. Okay, so that was game two. Let's look at game three. All right, so how do we sideboard? We cut one, we cut two, we cut three. And we brought in four thoughts eases and we're at 62 cards. Oh, we cut a ring. So we cut one, two. The ring's not that great against Karn. So one, two, three, four. And we brought in four thoughts eases and what? An Outland Liberator? Four thoughts eases and Outland Liberator to deal with a bridge or something off Karn. All right. So let's take a look at our hands. This hand's obviously good. Uh, the reason I started with this guy is so we can go one... Because we need three green, green pips next turn. The halfling only gives two. So here I just go with Grist. Oh, never mind. I just do this and just get in there. I just want to progress my board, I guess. They grief, take the grist, play another relic. Maybe I'm supposed to just double bowmaster here. Just in response to this. Maybe I'm supposed to just double bowmaster. So this they can't just draw with this. Um so now I play a Bowmaster at the end of their turn. I play a Bowmaster, they draw. I play the other Bowmaster, I hit them. Get the Dryad Arbor, gonna go full beatdown. And you want to play the land in case you... Like, imagine if I don't play this land and then next turn I draw a ring, right? I draw a ring and then I play this... And then off the ring, I draw land, or I draw yog or something. And let's see what our opponent does. They Knights Whisper into Bowmasters. I guess they didn't have a Damnation. But even if they didn't have a Damnation, even if they Damnation me, I still had the Stranger Geist coming back. So. We ended up getting there. Just aggro beats. Aggro yeets and beats. All right, so let's look at round number four. Okay, round four, game one. Dazil. Let's see. This hand's okay, right? We got dorks. Thoughtsies. Well, we lost Strangler Geist. So, if we lost Geist, I thought we should play the Halfling so it doesn't get murdered by... They could be Ren and Six. But, it's Gigant again, so it's that Grixis Death Shadow list. So, now we play this, now we play Land Tap, now we pass. They kill our guy. Big sadness. Now we're going to court at the end of their turn for Dryad Arbor. They bobble me. Dryad Arbor. Ba -ba 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 -ba. 
All right, so now let's see what we draw. So the this is an example of the ring being crazy. Like if we just play the ring here, it seems good. Because there's like playing a Yawgmoth, we don't really have a board. So we play the ring and we get spell pierced. Womp womp. So it wasn't that crazy. Should have played Yogg. Who knows if they have Drown or not, but I think this is fine play. Spell pierce main. It'll happen. See what our opponent does. Express Federation. Kill our guy. Play a 2 2 Death Shadow. This is not looking great for us, so. Should play the Yogg. If this Yogg lives, we'll be okay. Yogg's probably not gonna live. Oh, it lives. Alright, so. <clears throat> Stranger Geist. Start off with the Stranger Geist. Ah, they did kill the Yogg. I remember they killed the Yogg. We have Cord here, but we need to save Cord for next turn. Oh, we're just dead. Just dead to the breach. That was a little. They just had all the answers. One removal spell, two removal spells, three removal spells, four removal spells. We played one. Actually, they had one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of interaction. We cast one. We had one, two, three, four, five things killed. Not great. All right. Well, we got beat real bad there. So now I go to game number two. Sideboarding. We went up to 63 this time. I cut high arc. I cut one, two, three, four. And I brought in four endurances. Four endurances, a scavenging ooze, and I brought in the Outland Liberator because I wanted to have an answer to Unlicensed Hurst. And in a pinch, it can also deal with Breach. So those are the reasons I brought in. I went up to, this is what I'm saying, this whole tournament I just kind of winged it. Just kind of did whatever. Just testing stuff out. Just testing stuff. Just to see how it goes. I was also super tired, so I just played terrible. But, you know, we got there. Alright, so this hand's okay, right? One, start off two, two, two. Eventually we have some good payoffs in our hand. And there again, they're not going to be playing Blood Moon, so... We could just fetch out. Okay. Stranger guys, number one, smash. Stranger I think I played Grist here. Grist goes up. I should have plus the Grist here. This was a mistake. I should have played the Grist for it. I should have. I was thinking that maybe they're going to play Bowmasters in combat, but I should have just plus this. Right? I should have just plussed. This was bad. Or I should have just attacked first and then Bowmastered, right? But that was a mistake. I should have just attacked first and then played the Grist. So they play Bowmasters, they hurt the Grist, they bolt the Grist. Alright, so now... Pretty sure... Just pass here. I want an Endurance block. If I play the One Ring, it's kind of wrecked by the Bowmaster here. So I hold off on the One Ring to play the Endurance to Chump Block. So now we got to get the Endurance in play. I'm pretty sure I use the Endurance and I mill myself so I can't have my ring 
I think I play the Endurance here. I didn't play the Endurance? What? That was wild. Wild I didn't play that Endurance. Oh, uh, so then I blank this. Okay. I probably should have just played this Endurance at the end of turn. And targeted my own graveyard. It would have got drowned either way. And then I would have had the Stranger Geist this turn. This turn would be a lot better if I... Had, so I should have just played this at the end of my turn. And I should have played this at the end of my turn. And then targeted my graveyard. So they would have had to drown, kill the Endurance. Because now I end up throwing away this Strangaroo Geist. That's why I like to do these replays. Because that was a bad play. I should have played this at the end of turn. Just get it in play. Use my mana, right? I should have played it at the end of the turn. But I ended up blowing this, like doing this to this. But it cost me a Strangaroo Geist. So I should have played this at the end of turn. And then I would have gone, then I would have gone to my turn. And then I could have gone... Grist and then play another Strangaroo Geist, and I would have had another Geist here, but I end up countering this. And then I kill the Death Shadow. Kill the Shadow. Alright. See, I could have had another Strangaroo Geist here. I could have just put this Strangaroo Geist in play. So this was a mistake. Alright, what do they got? Expressive Iteration. They go to kill the Grist. We block. They kill my guy. And now... We play the ring. Draw a card. This is a good draw. We play the wolf. Really good spot we're in right now. Expressly iterate again. Alright, so they had a Mishra's Bobble here. So I played my Bowmasters in response. I killed their Bowmaster. The Bobble came off. We, we get the trigger off the Bobble. We get to ping them. And they conceded. They conceded because they know we're pinging them off the bobble. And then we're going to draw three cards. But they must have just had air in their hand. Must have just had air. Okay. So that was game two. Let's check out game number three. Uh, all right. So do we sideboard any different? We're up to 64 cards. Oh, my God. What I sideboard out. I took out a high arc and a wall of roots and a ring. So as of right now, I have four Stranger guys. Or I have four endurances in the deck, scavenging ooze, outland liberator. What the fuck else? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh boy, I'm an idiot. I just don't know why I do this stuff. It's what I do off stream. Off stream, I just kind of fuck around. I didn't know I was gonna like. I didn't know I was gonna end up streaming this. All right. Um, obviously this hand's not keepable. Uh, this hand's not keepable either. This hand is keepable. We're going to end up putting back the card. That's kind of a late game card. I put back a land. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, not a great hand. DRC, and we go halfling. I kill the halfling, attack with the DRC. 
we just play Basaju. Oh, no, I play that. Huh. Guess I hold Basaju in case they play the thing. So then I just play Basaju, and I don't think I play the Grist. Playing Grist doesn't do anything. I'll just jam Endurances. They play Bobble. They don't attack, so I'll just play the Endurance. I target them, because this DRC is getting a little... They are a Breach deck, after all, so you don't want them to have Bolts in their graveyard. Okay. So now there's the one ring. So now I'm probably just going to play the other Endurance. We could Grist here and hold back, but... I guess I play the Grist. This was kind of dumb. I guess I should have held this back. I don't know. I felt like I wanted to pressure them. Maybe I should have held this back. So they hit the Grist with an Unholy Heat and then Bowmastered the 1-1 one -one, and now they get to kill the Grist. Yeah, I should have left this untapped. We could have, like, just killed these things. Alright, so now they play... Now they have quite the board here. And we don't really have shit. So... Just gonna pass the turn. Because we have Bowmasters or Endurance. I don't know what the best thing is here. So then they have two cards, though, which is really good for us. This was crazy. So this was, uh, they hard cast Torok here. I remember this. Alright, so Tor Torok comes down. So we have a choice here, right? This I took some time with this choice, because I can go... We have a lot of choices here, but... We're going to assume this last card's a blank. But, like, if we play the Endurance, it's a really weird situation. I want to play one of these two, but I don't know which one I want to play. I don't remember which one I play, but there's value to each, right? I think I play the Bowmasters, and the problem is, if you kill a creature here, then these things have Delirium and they have to attack. So I think I play a Bowmaster, and I think I kill their Bowmaster. We could kill the Torok, but we could kill him with the trigger on the stack. But I think I want to kill the Bowmaster, because the Bowmaster messes with both of these cards. So like we're gonna lose probably you know these two or the you know what I mean. Maybe at the after this we're gonna want to get the Bowmaster dead. But this Bowmaster dying also means that these these guys are going to get Delirium and they're going to have to attack into my Endurance. So we kill that. They get the Endurance and the One Ring. They leave us with our best card. And they can't attack with these two, right? We just kill that. We just kill the Shadow for free. So we kill a DRC. And I don't know what's still in their hand, but... And this is a perfect, this is just the perfect draw. Now we have Yogmoth. This is an ex so you just play the Yogg. And now we're just sitting pretty. I don't really feel any reason to start doing stuff at the, at the, during our turn. Because they have quite a lot of attackers. And I want to be able to like chump block. Like let's say they draw a fetch land. Like... If we, like, shoot things with these before we pass our turn to try and hit land drops and progress our board, then if they attack with... If they draw a fetch land and, like, attack with the shadow, it's kind of sketchy. We could, in theory, die if, like, we use these things with... And then they, like, swing with the shadow and we can't block. And then they're just, like, um, dressed down and we just lose. So... Or Team or Battle Rage in the old days. But anyway... So, I want to leave these guys a chump block. So, we'll chump block. And then, if I remember correctly, our opponent makes a boo-boo here. They fuck up pretty badly. And it'll happen. 
So they go full swing. This this is a terrible attack, and you'll see why. So, this is a human, right? Protection from humans. So, we just get to blow him out. So, we block with the Yogg. Kill the... Kill this. Block here. Block here. Right? They just made a mistake here. And then we take this... Shoot this so we can kill it, right? Make this a, th a fourth two so we can kill it in combat. And then they just forget, right? They bolt the Yogg thinking three plus four, that'll kill it. And then that's not how that works, unfortunately. Forgot protection. Yeah, that sucks. But that was it. Then we just untab with Yogg and they're at 10. So they, they know that the game's over. Alright, so that was round number 4. Let's go to round number 5. Did we sideboard here? No, this is game 1. Alright. Um, We are on the... On the draw. Let's check out our hand. So, this hand's okay, right? We have turn one land, turn two Bowmaster. Turn three, we can cord for something. Bowmaster's really good with cord, so... I'm just like, alright, we'll keep. So they go to six. Um, ba -ba -ba. They go to five, and I'm like, oh, maybe they're Tron. Maybe they're something like that. So, anyway... <clears throat> They're at... What do they do? So they play Saga, they play Amulet. It's like, oh shit. This hand's really bad against those cards. So we drew a cord, which is one of the worst draws in the deck. Then we... Crack out our land. Then we played a Stranger of Geist. I want to play a Stranger of Geist to just attack. Maybe I should have played Bowmasters, but... Just wanted to get in there. And this card is actually better to play on turn one with cord because this cord this card is free the the cord turn that you play it so like if you play this like if I wanted the cord you know what I mean like this this card's free with cord but doesn't matter because we die this turn we just drop dead. Because remember, two amulets is death. And then they double strike it. Neat! We died on turn three. That, that went well. Check out game number two. So, sideboarding. We cut one, two, three bowmasters. Uh, one, we cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We cut eight, nine. We cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we brought in four Thoughtseize. Uh, four Thoughtseize. We brought in Outland Liberator. Then we brought in two Force of Vigors and two Necromentias. So that's a total of nine cards. And we took out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We did it. Look, I had 61 like a normal Magic player. Okay, so here we have a Thoughtseize. We have a Thoughtseize, then we have a bunch of aggressive Stranger Root guys. And we have a Necromentia. This is a good hand, so I keep it. Thoughtseize. Their hand has a lot of good cards in it. It's got Saga, it's got all this stuff. This is a, this is a very good hand, right? So they start off with a Saga. So we draw... Draw Yavamaya. Now... There's an issue playing Yavamaya against them. Especially with their hand. We don't really want to give them green mana. So just Twilight Mire. Attack. So. Now, here's an interesting turn, right? 
This is a very, very interesting turn. If I play the... I could play the High Arc and play a Stranger Geist and just attack. But if I do that, they get to go to town here, right? They get to go to town. They get to get a amulet. They get to make a land drop. They get to, you know, explore Dryad, do all that crap. So I attack... I'm in the tank quite a bit here. And then I decide to play this and I decide to necro them. But I don't remember what I name here. I don't remember if I name Amulet of Vigor or if I name Primeval Titan. Let's see what I do. Okay. So I choose to name Primeval Titan. It's possible I'm supposed to name Amulet here. Because their hand is kind of trash without Amulet. But... I just went with this. Which... I don't know if it was right. What would you guys have named? You know, like we could have named uh, Amulet here. Then this thing fetches nothing... It would have been, it would have been close, right? This is a close call, but I chose Titans here, and it was they only have one Colossus and four packs, so I was like, eh, whatever. I guess this is okay. They only have the one Colossus as a way to kill me, so I take it. They get a guy, so this see I should have maybe just. They pop off, they get this, they hit me. Right? So I'm like, alright, this sucks. So now we go, Stranger Geist, Guy, attack. I want to do attack because I got to put pressure on them. So naturally, what they do... Naturally, they just drew their one of Cultivator Colossus. And just shit on me and killed me immediately. And I just died. Just died instantly that fast. Even though they had one of these in the deck, I just died. Just, that was, this was unbelievably frustrating. And look at this, too. Bop, 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 bop. Nice, right? Nice. And they had a fetch land, plus they had a bunch of land drops, plus they had Azusa and exp like what the, the f I was so tilted this game. I mean, maybe I was supposed to necromancer the amulets instead of the titans. I don't know, man. That was tough. This was a tough loss. That this this hurt. They just ripped the one out of forty. I guess they have five out of forty, if you count the, if you count the Pactor Summoners packs. But this hurt. This hurt a lot. They're just like, oh, by the way, yeah, I'm just gonna rip it, and then kill you. So I died on their turn four. I died on turn three, and I died on turn four. I love Amulet. I love Amulet. So that's just my loss in the Swiss. So now we're on round six. Marco Bala ba 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 don't know. Alright, so ba, 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 ba. This hand's sweet. Don't really want the blood artist, but we got the half laying into the grist. It's beautiful. We're on the play too. So we're gonna start off with Yavamaya, boom. Pending my guy. Play the Blood Artist. So this is some kind of control deck. It appears. That was a sick draw. So now we just Grist. They counter the Grist. Missed an attack for zero there. Don't do anything here. So play the Wall of Roots. 
And this is kind of a sick play here. So they cycle Shark Typhoon. This is where it gets kind of sick. So obviously they're sitting on a bunch of counter spells, right? They attack us, whatever. So now we have Cord for one, right? Which I cast, and they, they tanked a while, and it was a halfling. So now we just get to resolve one of these. Legendary spells can't be countered. Uncounterable. Which was sick. I played the young wolf first so I could do things with it. Then we put Yogg in play. Uncounterable Yogg, by the way. Then we start doing some stuff. Start drawing some cards. They have a binding here on Yogg. But we could start drawing some cards. Binding comes down. Target the Yogg. I kind of want to keep this around to have an uncountable ring next turn. So I get rid of that. Uh, then I sack the Wall of Roots to just draw a card. So we have another Yogg Moth. We have another ring. There's no point in drawing any more cards. We'll keep this alive. So, this hand's sweet. We're in a good spot. So, what do they do? Dress down at the end of turn. Which is kind of annoying. So... I don't really want to play the One Ring. I don't know. Because, like... This thing can't counter anything. So, I think I play Grist here. Because playing Yawgmoth into Dress Down and Counter Spell doesn't do anything. Especially when I have the Uncounterable Halfling. I could be a little patient here. Grist, we... This was a mistake here, again. I should have just plussed. I should have immediately just plussed. Actually, what I should have done is just attacked first. Right? I should have just attacked with these two creatures. Here I am playing Grist again pre-combat for no reason. And then I attack. And that just lets them binding my Grist for free. See, I didn't even get any value from it. That was just stupid. I just can't, That was a bad play. I, I can't do stuff like that. I gotta attack first, then play the Grist. They Archmage Charm my Uncounterable Halfling. So now I have some choices. We go for the uh, ring, I think. This gets countered. This is kind of bait for the counter spell. Let me attack. They wouldn't have stolen this if they didn't have a counter spell, you know? So, then we go to our turn. And this is really great, right? This is just the perfect draw. It shows the weakness of Leyline Binding and why I don't think it's a very good card. Just, I mean, it's good against Scam, but it's not good in general. I don't think this card's very good. Because look at, look at how... Look, they just, like, uncounterable get a Yawgmoth. So, we just play a Strangaroot Geist... And then we attack. And then the second that they tap out, they just die. Right? The second that they tap this, they die. So the second they tap out and cycle or do anything crazy. Like they want to cycle a giant shark here. And then, boom, instant death. Instant death. Instant death. Bounce, bop, 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 insta death. That was a cool way to tap out. All right, you're dead. So, that worked out pretty well. So, <clears throat> what did we sideboard? We sided. Uh, I brought, I left, took one, two, three, four, five out. And I brought in four thought seizes 
and the Outland Liberator for these five cards. Maybe I didn't really like this card's not that great on the draw. It's kind of low impact. Same with this, same with these. These cards aren't that great on the draw. And the one ring, if the game's gonna go slow, it's gonna benefit them. So like I didn't really want to do the one ring. Alright, so let's take a look at our hands. This hand's okay. It's kind of sketchy. If they kill this halfling, we're doomed. But I didn't keep it. So we got this, which is just a little bit more aggro. I made a mistake here. I made a really, really big mistake here. I I put this back, right? I'm like, these cards can win me the game. And I put this back. Just, just terrible. Just a mistake. It just cost me the game immediately. I lose the game when I do this, right? So now we just... The Thoughtseize was a perfect draw. Here's their hand. They had one, two. So obviously I want to win with the Grist here. So I take the Purge because the Purge is the best answer to Grist. So what do they do on turn two? They play this Flooded Strand. So now... I'm just going to swing with the stranger. I'm just going to get this clock on him. Just going to get this clock on him. Mm. So this is oh, this is an interesting spot. I can Thoughtseize plus Bowmaster or just play the Grist. They've drawn two cards that I don't know about. So I know about these three cards and I don't know about two of them. So, I don't remember what I do here. I think I attack with the Strangerukeist. No, I thought these. And so, their hand... This is their hand. Dress down, da, da, da. I take the... I take the Dispute, which might have been wrong. And I price myself into casting the Bowmaster. Maybe it was better to just play the Grist that turn. I don't know. We attack... So they dress down and at the end of turn in response I Bowmaster just to get in a point of damage. So the dress down's gone. And they play the hall and then they pass the turn. Then the end step they put down a dress down. So here, here if I just kept the Yawgmoth from earlier and put back a grist. If I kept the Yogmoth and put back the grist here, I would have just gone land Yogmoth, you know, and I would have been fine, right? I would have won this game. But instead, I end up losing this game. So we get in our attack. Get in our attack. But here I should just have a Yawgmoth instead of a Grist. And I could just play the Yawgmoth. But instead I play a Grist. They have Hollowed Moonlight, which stops the Grist token. When I plus for the Grist, it stops the token. But if we had just played Yawgmoth here, we would have won this game. Alright, so their Hollowed Moonlight's gone. So the only card we know about is a Solitude. They can't cast Solitude here. They have Rafines and this, so they can't actually cast a Solitude. I think I get Dryad Arbor here. Because I know... Oh, no, I don't get Dryad Arbor. Maybe I should have gotten Dryad Arbor to just attack. But I guess I figured I wanted to get four mana to be able to cast the Ring and Yogg and stuff. But I should have maybe got Stranger. I should have maybe got Dried Arbor and just attacked. All right, so we just swing, full swing, cycle the shark. Okay. So, the thing dies. Then I plus here. 
and pass. Maybe I should have killed the shark. But here's where it gets sketchy. And then... Just the fact that I don't have a Yawgmoth, right? They also play Mystic Gate, so now they have Solitude. Just if this Gris was just a Yawgmoth, I would just have won this game, right? Because then I could just draw a bunch of cards. But... Then I can't attack because they have the Solitude. Then they Solitude my Strangerook Geist. Then they... I, I lose the game from this point. Just because I didn't keep the Yawgmoth. Now I just flood out. Kill their thing. They take my tutu. They keep returning the Leyline Binding. You know, like I just get destroyed. I draw Yawgmoth, but it's too late. They have the Binding. I shrink two things. Shrink, shrink, but they start getting, they cast Deluge. As soon as they cast that Deluge, the game's over. Then I just never resolve another spell, I don't think. So they hit me, and they have a Shark Typhoon in their hand. So they hit me. Play Young Wolf, cool. I don't attack here because I think I want a cord for something. I don't know. So now I cord for... I don't remember what I wanted to get. I think I want to get Outland Liberator here. Yeah, I wanted to get Liberator... So I could get the Yawgmoth back that was under the binding. That was kind of dumb. Maybe I should just cast Yawgmoth. But. And we get countered and we lose. Counter spell. And that is that. That is game number two. I lost the game when I put back the Yawgmoth. So then this game... I bring back the Shark Typhoon. Attack me. And I'm pretty sure I draw absolute garbage. I could get away with a ring here. I could draw one ring. We get to Dryad Arbor. In case we draw Yogg. Nope. Draw land. Concede. Alright. Game number three. Um, this sounds good. Just aggro, aggressive. The second your turn one play doesn't die, this deck is just S tier. S tier Yogg. So now we just shit out two guys. Look at me like a good player. I waited till second main to play that. So good. Um... They just do nothing. So now we have Thought Seize. Their hand is kind of terrible. I take the Solitude, right? So I can work my way to the Yogg. So then I just play these attack. They binding a guy. No big deal. So this is our opponent's turn. They just played the Flooded Strand. So we drew a land. And then I just attack with this. This way, I mean, like, I have cord here at the end of their turn. I So they binding it, so this is fine. So now I have cord for Dryad Arbor or Strangrove Geist or Blood Artist here. So they've used binding, binding, right? So their hand is Deluge, Mystic Gate, plus Unknown. So now I cord for Outland Liberator here. Because they didn't do anything right. 
So now I can cord for the Liberator. And Liberator is going to flip. This is why I will always cord for Liberator. Because, like, it represents... I can, like, attack and get these things back. It represents killing both of these with this Liberator. And they counter it, which is perfect. Because that means I get to Yogg. Get to Yogg here. Now we know their hand is... Memory Deluge plus Unknown, so I attack with the Young Wolf. Get in for two. Now we sack the Young Wolf. We draw another Yogg. We could shoot this into this and start draw keep drawing again. Mostly because we're looking for a Thought Seize to Thought Seize the Deluge. But I didn't do that. I just chilled. And our opponent... Slant. Oh, they drew Verdict, which is obviously very good. So we shoot the Young Wolf. And I think I keep this so I can have a bit of pressure. And now we just play the ring, right? Because Yawgmoth would be okay here, but the ring's going to let us get so far ahead, right? They have... One memory deluge in their hand. And like we're going to be able to make a land drop. So I just play the ring. And this thought seize was good too. It does put me a little low on life here. I didn't think. Maybe I didn't really need to shock myself a while ago. But obviously in this situation. We're so low. I think I take the solitude. So we leave him with the deluge. And they deluge. They're looking to find... They miss lands, which is really weird. So... I should have maybe drawn with the ring here first. But I didn't. I should have drawn with the ring first. I can thought seize here, but... I get kind of dangerously low if I thought seize. Oh, I do it. So their hand is. I take the counter spell. Their hand is leyline binding, leyline binding. So I go to two here. So their hand is binding, binding. So I remember winning on this turn, but I don't remember how. So I draw three cards. Okay, that's how. I have another one ring. So their hand is binding, binding. So we play the halfling first. Attack for four. They binding the yog. So the hand is one Leyline Binding. Guess I got lucky to draw this other ring. And then we just play the other ring. Reset the ring. And they have a Binding in their hand. I don't know the other card, but we don't draw with it, right? There's no reason to draw. We know their hand is one Leyline Binding. So, they're at three. All we have to do is cord for a Strangaroo Geist. They get rid of this. They just die. Cord, Strangaroo Geist, attack. So, the one ring bailed us out of the jam that the other one ring got us in. But I could have fetched a lot better in that game. Like, I shocked in one of these that I didn't need to. And then that game wouldn't have been close. 
If I didn't shock early in the game, like this, this, I probably would have won that game a lot cleaner. All right, round seven. This is the win and in. If I win round seven, I'm definitely in. And I'm going to stay in. So. This hand's okay. Got a wall roots, got a grist. So they play a swamp. So we'll just put overgrown tomb into play tapped. Okay. There's a void walker. So we're playing against scam. So play wall of roots. They attack. So now we're gonna play wall of roots plus I did it this way so I could use the cord at the end of their turn. They have bow masters that kill my guy. I could have still courted there, but if I court, yeah, maybe I should have courted there. I get the arbor. I go to kill the thing. They feign death it, which really sucks for me. But we got the feign death out of them. And now we have these two, which we play. We don't do anything yet, right? No point in doing anything yet. We want to, like... We could take a little bit of damage. We could take another three. Because we really just want to proliferate this thing down. Okay. So this is kind of tricky because they have the Bowmasters. But I'm pretty sure I play the Grist, kill the Bowmaster... Because I didn't want to let them ping me. Play the Grist. Kill the Bowman. Oh, I plussed. Alright, well. I don't know what the hell I'm doing then. So now I like have to shoot this twice. Let them grow this thing. That's yeah, weird. I don't remember what I do here. All right. Okay, okay, okay. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, I don't... Boz, stop. Okay. A lot of stuff happened there. But basically, I went to proliferate their Void Walker... And they feign death. Then I went to proliferate again. And they feign death again. And then I didn't proliferate it either time. So then I had to cord for a bowmaster to kill it. It's it's really weird what has happened. So, sorry about that. It just shot through most of it. But basically I went proliferate. And they went feign death. Then I went proliferate again. And they went feign death again. And then I just didn't proliferate it either time. So it never died. It was still a 2-1. And then I drew a bowmaster. Corded. Drew a cord. Corded for the bowmaster to kill this. Now I use the grist to kill the bowmaster. And then they concede. So they used two feign deaths here on the void walker. And then that led me to just kill this thing. Alright, game number two. So, I boarded up two cards. Oh my god, embarrassing. I cut... This is bad against Bowmaster, bad against Bowmaster, bad against Bowmaster. They're cutting They're cutting the things. They're cutting Ragavans and stuff, so this card's not that impactful. So I cut one, two, three, four, five. And then this is really bad against Fury, six, and then seven with the one ring. So I cut seven cards, and I brought in four Thoughts Eases, four Endurance, Scavenging Ooze. That's nine cards. And I cut seven, so that's just good, smart things to do. We're just trying. I was just experimenting with stuff in this tournament. All right. So 
This hand's good, obviously. This hand's a keeper. We just go Misty, Forest, Halfling. They fetch their land tapped. Now they play Unlicensed Hurst. And then... Uh, we drew a Grist. So I, I opted to play Grist instead of these things. Because, like, if I play both of these and they just, like, Fury, right? Like, this this match, I was just constantly thinking about getting Furied. And I got Furied a bunch of times this match. Alright, so, they Fury me here. And they... <coughs> So they killed my board and crewed this and attacked my Grist down to one. So I'm like, all right, that's annoying. So plus the Grist. And I'm pretty sure I don't really want to play both of these two out and then just have them go like Fury eat them. So I'm pretty sure I played Scavenging Ooze here and then ate the Fury. Oh no, I just played these two cards out. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I should have just played the ooze. Alright, anyway. So now they fury me again. They go bonk, bonk, bonk. They got to kill all these. And eat them. Terrific. Terrific. Just what you love to see. Now I play... And then I put... It's hard for me to put into words how much I dislike that card. And then... We play Scavenging Ooze. Attack for one. Here comes Fury number whatever. They Fury me. They go after the Scavenging Ooze. So might as well gain some life. They crew this again. They attack. I'm at 16. So now we... Uh, I want to just... I mean, we could play the Yawgmoth. But with one thing, it doesn't really do much. They just, like, terminate it. So I'm pretty sure I just hold up the Endurance here. Just attack for one. Hold up the Endurance. And then we just play the Endurance. I do it on myself so I could draw the Scavenger Goose again. Or Cord for it again. Plus it makes their Hearse weaker. So I play Yogg. Now I have like a bunch of creatures to mess with. So they terminate the Yogg so I draw a card. Now I have this thing. And so now I think we go Ignoble plus Endurance. Attack for a couple. Now they draw. Play a Black Leaf Cliffs. We play another Endurance. And we attack. And then we play Stranger Geist. Attack for a lethal. And their hand. They revealed their hand. And their hand was a fury. They revealed their hand to me. And their last card was a fury. So we literally beat one, two, three, four. Four furies. They just didn't draw an undying effect. We got very lucky this game. And then we beat. So now we're locked for the top eight. Locked for the top eight, and then round one of the top eight. We play against friend of the stream, Soul. Now, I knew that Soul was playing an interesting deck. I knew that he was because I he's a friend of my he's a friend of mine, friend of the stream. So like, I knew he was playing an interesting deck. So I had seen iterations of it before. Right? I had seen this 5-0 this uh, with Bowmasters and like a green-black mid-range list. I've seen this before. So 
I mean, like, I was just like, what the fuck is this card doing? I didn't even read this card. But it's a cool deck. And it's cool. It's cool that people are innovating. This dude's cool. Big fan of his. I'm glad that he's innovating. I'm glad that he's doing well. He was also in Dingo's chat, and I uh, maybe talked a little crap. And then you said, and the, you know, the, the little trash talking. Obviously, we can't keep this hand. This hand's good. This hand's really good. Put back the second wall of roots. And then, so we know, I know him. So we get scammed. They took our wall of roots. They took my wandering. I'm just going to put this game on fast forward because I got murdered this game. I got absolutely murdered this game. Block the Bowmaster. He has another Undying fucking Malice. This is the problem with Bowmaster, is the Undying Malice in that deck. So you can never really kill it. And I'm just dead here. I'm at 7. I'm at 7. It's turn 3. I just got absolutely mollywomped by that guy. By uh, Soul. He just crushed me. Just absolutely crushed me. Alright. So, let's go to game number 2. So game number two, what did we sideboard? I went up to 65 cards. Fucking course I did. Okay, so I boarded out Wall of Roots, Young Wolf, Cord, Cord, and one ring. I boarded out five cards, and I brought in four Thoughts Eases, four Endurances, scavenging is i brought in nine cards and i cut one two three four five so that's why i'm at 65 cards like a fucking idiot i was so tired by this point and i was just winging it i didn't need to bring in the endurances against him that was the mistake i probably shouldn't have brought in endurances all right this hand's good obviously play this Pass the turn. Get friggin' scammed. It hurt so bad. They took the Yog Moth, so now we have. The One Ring. Get smacked. They kill my thing. We play the One Ring. Attack them. The one ring obviously just takes over this game. Hex mage. They can't attack me. Then I uh, talk a little crap. Want to clear my ring so it doesn't hurt me. They could hex mage it. Lose one life. Buff <laughs> All right, so now we're going to draw two. So we got a bunch of dorks, so we'll just dork out. Dork, dork, play land tap, pass. This is what I mean. This is why Yawgmoth is good with the ring, because you just kind of expand your board. I block here to preserve some life total, so I don't die to the one ring. All right, so I go to nine here. We draw a Yogg, I just play Yogg, and I talk a little crap about making it uncounterable again, even though they have. And we play Yogg Moth, and that's attack for a couple. And like here was, this was kind of an awkward play here. But I think they were just kind of scuffed and out of things to do. Right? So. So I sacrificed uh, the halfling to target this. 
and in response they hex maged it which was like whatever because this doesn't like kill this thing because now like i just let i still get the draw but i guess he probably just didn't have much else to do so now i get the draw and then we just they fatal push the yog but at this point it doesn't matter right So I kill that thing. Going a little low with the ring here. Plus. My thought sees me take the Bowmaster, take the Endurance, Tact. This crystal is just lethal. I go to one. If they had a Bowmaster, I would have died, but then Gristall just killed me. What if I had Endurance, though? That's true. I would have died. I would have died to Endurance. I would have died to Bowmaster. All right. Game number three. Um, game number three. So, I'm at 62 cards. I made some sideboarding changes. I left... I cut all of these. Because this card is just so bad into Bowmaster. Right? It's just so bad into Bowmaster. So, I cut 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I have 4 Thought Seizes. 4 Eldritch Evolution. Or 4... Four Thoughtseize, four Endurance, and Scavenger Use in. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards out. I cut the cords because the game if the game goes late, I don't think I need the game to go late. I just need to play a value game. Hey, I cut the Ragon Vans for me. Nice. This hand's sweet. The important thing is we didn't get griefed. So, get the Swamp, Thoughtseize. So, this was their hand. This hand is not going to beat my deck. So, they just... Now, I just play the Wall of Roots. Um, they're going to play a Jacilla. I don't know what this card does. Flying Death Touch, whatever. It's got a lot of text on it, but it doesn't beat Grist. So now we play Grist plus. And if you notice here, I can still play Bowmaster on their turn. So they play Ikoria here, which is weird. They get Ikoria instead of playing the Shieldred. And, like, I don't know how this works. Non-human creature you control may have that creature assigned combat as though it weren't blocked. So, like, they could attack and kill the Grist. But then I can, like, block here. I don't know how this works, right? I don't know if they have to assign one because of Death Touch. But I guess, I guess for each, you may have that creature assigned combat damage though it weren't blocked. So it would ignore this, and then I could do one damage to this, and then I could Bowmaster it. So I blocked with a stupid insect. And then if they destroyed this and got the flip side, the Zorlog Apex of Ikoria, I could go one, two. But I didn't do it. Then the end step, I play the Bowmaster, hit the, hit the thing. And they kill the Gris. Now I draw Yogg, and then I just, you know, do Yogg stuff. Then we do Yogg stuff, attack for four, shrink the Gisela. Now I have this, which is a cord for one. 
Now I card for one young wolf. Kill that thing. And I block and then shoot the wall of roots on the young wolf. Shoot that. They have an undying thing, which is fine. Because then when the undying thing hits, now we have endurance. They have fatal push on this, but this is fine because we get to go endurance reset. Endurance reset. Then we want to make this into a 2 2, trying to find another Yawgmoth. They have a Shieldred in their hand still. We know about a Shieldred, so I think I just. Thought sees the Shieldred. Shieldred. And I think I just progress my board. I don't even play the ring. Bowmasters kill my Bowmaster. Fatal push my wall. And now we just have... Now this game's over. They have no cards in hand. Record for the Yog Father. Record for the Yog Father. Kill that thing and attack. Now we just shrink our thing. So now we're like sitting super pretty. They draw and do nothing. We proliferate. They have rebirth. So we just proliferate these up, proliferate these up and attack. GG's. That's a cool deck. GG's. Alright. Uh, so now we're on to the semifinals. Uh, against McWinsauce. He is quite the quite the good player. Be back. Okay. Game one <coughs> of the semifinals. So, don't know why the chat's here already. This is me saying, hey, hey, good luck. Okay. So they reveal Kahira. So we know four color elementals or control, maybe. This hand's not going to beat four color. This hand's okay. So, dork. They just pass the turn. We play Wall of Roots. Now I could have not attacked here and courted for a, but it doesn't. That's not gonna do anything. I just play lands. So I drew a Yog Moth here. So I think I I just went for it right, because I assumed four color wouldn't have counter spells. So it's like Yogg. And they're just like, boom. Counterspell. It's like, ugh. Vomit. So, Teferi, bounce my guy. I'm like, alright. Play these two. Play Grist. Play Young Wolf. Pass the turn. So, what do they do? Play Ren. Ping my thing. And here... It's like, okay. So we play a young wolf. So this is seven here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can just get a yog. Get a yog. Right? Maybe they have another counter spell, whatever. So they have force of negation. Which. Bleh. So I want to keep that. They only have three cards. I think Run and Six is the secret broken card in this deck. So I'm like, all right, I'm just going to kill this Run and Six. So I kill the Ren. So. Uh, 
I kill the Wren. They plus. They play another Wren. They return to land. They return to Kahira. So, let's see what we do here. We drew this garbage. So, I could have. I probably should have killed this Wren. I should have gone 1, 2, 3, attack, and then minus this to kill this Wren. That probably was the smartest play, but I didn't do that. I just plussed and then killed the Teferi. Maybe I was supposed to kill the Wren. I don't know. I probably was supposed to just sacrifice this to kill this. This probably cost me the game. I don't know if this cost me the game or whatever. I don't know. So now they play Omnath. So they had a fetch land. They didn't. I did, killing the Ren didn't matter. So then they play Chalice on one, which at this point who gives a shit? And then they play Kahira. They ping the Grist. So we drew Bowmaster here, if I'm not mistaken. So I can go kill, the, sack this, kill this, attack both of this, and then... Or I could sack the Wall of Roots. <coughs> so I think I sacked the Wall of Roots. Kill the, kill the Omnath. Could have Omnath third landfall this turn. I don't know what that means. I punted pretty bad. Didn't see Yavamaya. Could have. Oh, I guess. I guess they could have played a fetch land the prior turn. They could have played this last turn and then plussed and gotten a Misty and then done a bunch of stuff. So now we'll swing at the. We'll swing at uh, Ren and Six. And whatever they block, we'll ping with the Bowmaster. So now we have to ping and kill the Wren. So they have this is this is this is just if you this right here is why the ring needs to be banned. You're you're about to see why the ring is broken, right? All right. So I feel good about this spot, right? One, two, three, cycle, ping. That's good for me. The ring. Ugh. We get to grow our dude. Yay. Get to play a grist. Plus the grist. Swing everybody. Nope. Swing doesn't matter. So now they have a one ring. They have two cards in hand. Two cards. Two cards. They go to three cards. They pending the Bowmaster. They have four cards. They untap it. They have seven cards. Menomino. School at Water's Edge is broken with the ring. They have seven cards in hand. Seven. They started with two. And I had a freaking Bowmaster. Seven cards in hand. Vomit. So, now they binding the Grist. I play Strangaroot. They counter it. I attack. I binding that. I get a grist. I plus. So they're at five. They go to two. They go to two. And then the rest of the game is just not close. Do you see this? 14 cards in their hand. And I can't kill them. So we just plus and do the thing and pass the turn. They bounce the Grist. They have a fresh ring. I'm just going to put it on warp speed. Plus. 
Teferi, one ring, which they bounced. Then they're just going to sit there at two life. Cord for Yogg, they have Counterspell. We play Grist, they have Counterspell. It's weird what happens when you draw up to 14 cards. So now they have, they just plus, pass the turn. We draw one drop into the Chalice. We swing, dress down Supreme Verdict. Blech. And that is that. They have 15 cards left. They've gone to... F they have 15 cards left in their deck. I have 38. They've gone through 40-something cards. I try and cord for a dry halfling. So I could resolve something through Counterspell. And... Pretty crazy. I guess the game's lagging out because they're through so many of their cards. But obviously this game's over. They play a Solitude and I concede after that. Pretty sure I concede. Yeah, I mean, what am I supposed to do at this point? So they went from two cards. The ring drew them 40 gabillion cards. With this Miyamo, it was crazy. This is crazy. And this deck just has the tools to stabilize, so... This was uh, pretty gross. Pretty gross. We had them to two. Had them at literal two. Alright, so... Game number two. And... I guess I have already said this. Uh, so let's check out how we sideboarded. We went, um, I sideboarded out Walroots, Walroots, Young Wolf, Cord for four Thought Seizes and an Outland Liberator. So that's the extra card is the Liberator for 62. The Liberator to get the Leyline Bindings and Chalices and stuff like that. This hand is kind of okay. You can go Halfling, Halfling, Halfling. But I don't think it's keepable. So I Mulligan. This hand's way better. I put back the Liberator and I Thought Seize them. This is their opening hand. So I play Tarn. So now we're going to just play Wall of Roots. Drew a Halfling. Halfling was a really good draw there. So. Now here. I could have played the One Ring. But they would have just Leyline Binding it. Right? They would have just gone one, two, three. So I went Uncounterable. Played Grist. I figured I'd let the Grist eat the Leyline Binding. Got a double Grist there, which is pretty sweet. So they Binding the Grist, sure. They Dressed out at the end of turn, which means I can't use these two for mana to play the Grist or the One Ring, which was so gross. And then they... And then they verdicted me. Just so gross. So gross. So I could just play Bowmasters. And just not having the lands here really ended up hurting me. Attack. They played the ring. They... Got my guy bigger. So now I drew a young wolf. Couldn't attack. And pass the turn. 
They go to nine. They draw. They I even get to hit him with the bowmaster. So now, this is a tough spot, right? Because they obviously, at this point, probably have a solitude. So if I attack with all these, I just get decimated. It is a lethal attack, but there's no way I can make it, right? So I swing. So they play that. What'd they do? They penned it and binding it? And I was like, alright, that sucks. So now I go land grist. Plus the grist. And they had solitude anyway. They solitude the bowmaster. This is not good. They're at five again. So, I could double, I think I'd end up double blocking, even though this is, like, dangerous. They end up playing a Hollowed Moonlight, so my guy doesn't come back, which was pretty frustrating. Then there's Teferi to reset the rent, binding this. And now, I finally drew a One Ring. So now I can get in the ring game. But they have seven cards at this point, right? They have seven cards. They go to three. They binding my ring, just play another ring. This game's over, right? They have seven cards in hand. They have an active ring. This game is over. So, Chalice on one, which is great. I guess we still have, I mean, we still have a Bowmaster here, but they have Solitude, and I'm like, alright, I don't want this to die, so I Bowmaster, and they have Dress Down. And that's that. It's, it's so hard to beat the card advantage that the ring gives. And they just attack me with this bone. They ping it, attack with this, and the game's over. As soon as they go up, the game ends. And here's a Teferi. They get to... Good game. You're the better ring deck. All right. I'm going to look at the opening hand again. Because I feel like... I feel like I put the wrong card back. Let's see. If I would have kept this Liberator instead of this second Grist, maybe this was the right thing to do because of all the bindings in the Chalice. We probably would have been a lot better off. No, because it just would have got Verdicted away. But when it would have got Verdicted, we could have got the Grist back. I don't know. It's sketchy. It was sketchy. McQuinsauce ended up winning uh, the whole challenge with this list. This is going to be... I imagine this is going to be the future moving on. Just some kind of four-color pile with the ring. Kind of crazy that only had three run and sixes, but you got to make room for all the crap you're playing. But this deck is crazy. The ring... It just, like... They, once they ring, they could just start playing games with the ring with Teferi's and just play another ring, you know? So, and they can, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, you can Miyama uh, Odawara, the one ring, you can, like, do all kinds of stuff to it. But, overall, we finished third place, which is not a bad thing to do. I felt pretty good about it. Pretty good overall about the way the deck felt. I played really loose. I was just testing stuff out. I was boarding in a million cards. Going way up. 61. I don't know what... I think... I don't think we need filigree. I don't think we need this anymore. I think Rhinos is gone. So I think moving forward, I think I do this. Uh, I don't think I have another Bowmaster. 
But when Bowmaster is good, Bowmaster is crazy. So I think I want to do something like this moving forward. Because if you look at the results of the challenges this weekend, right? Omnath. Omnath, 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 Omnath. Omnath. Um, this has got to be Omnath. It's Anzid. Anz is probably playing rings. Uh, Anz is lost in the sauce. Cosmic Rebirth, hell yeah. Um, so I imagine here's Omnath. So I imagine that moving forward, do you know what? There's not a single one in the top eight. No rhinos. No rhinos. No rhinos, no rhinos, no rhinos, no rhinos, nope, yep, you get the drift, just absolutely no rhinos, who's this idiot, what's this idiot playing, anyway, uh, rhinos is gone, so, how far back, oh, jeez, this is like, Rhinos have left the meta, I think. So, I think moving forward, I want another Bowmaster. When Bowmaster's good, it's good. So, I think this is what I'd want moving forward. I don't know if you need Necros anymore. But, I still think they're good. Um, so, I'm going to move forward. I'm going to play this. I don't think Endurance should be in the main deck. I don't think you need it anymore. I think the less toolboxy and more just consistent pile we go in the main deck, the better. Maybe I want to do another ring. Maybe it ends up like this. Maybe you play this. I don't know. Four rings is a lot. I, I have to test it out moving forward. I don't want to be at 61, but ring into ring is incredibly powerful. But I don't think you want to be doing the toolbox... I think with the ring, it behooves you not to be doing toolbox stuff. Because, you know, if this was evolution, we could, like, you know, build the, you know, evolution to Yogg and try and combo a lot faster. But a lot of times you just play in the ring and riding the card advantage that the ring gives you to victory. So I think, I think this is going to be moving forward. It's going to look like this. And uh, I'm going to try this uh, tomorrow. Tuesday uh, on a last chance qualifier. Uh, modern last chance. I'm doing this tomorrow. Oh, no, this one. This one tomorrow in 18 hours. So uh, I think I'll probably play this. The One Ring's kind of clunky and not all that great all the time. I don't know. But Bowmaster's really good, too. Like, I want four of this. I want four of this. I want four of this. I want, I want, I want, I want all the consistency to just have a very consistent deck. I think, I think Strangaroot Geist is really good for killing Planeswalkers. I don't want to cut Strangaroot Geist. You know, Hierarch's just, Hierarch's vulnerable, but, you know, every card in your deck is vulnerable to removal. So just, you know, you have to start taxing your opponent's removal at some point. So I think moving forward, it maybe looks like this. Or maybe, yeah, probably moving forward, I'm going to play this. So I think Bowmaster's really good. Maybe I do, maybe I do this. And then put a one ring in the sideboard. No, maybe, maybe it's something like this. And then this gets to be another sideboard card. Um, probably... Something to help beat four color, which would maybe be Shieldred. I don't know. Maybe you want four Bowmasters like this. It's it's hard to say, right? But essentially, these cards become the flex slots. I don't think playing Endurance in the main is a good idea, and I also think that the rise of four color is going to help push 
the rise of four color is going to help push living end out of the meta you know i think living end is going to be in for a rough time um so i don't know we'll see what ends up happening i don't know how i'm gonna be playing moving forward but it's probably maybe i just play this moving forward four rings cut this Maybe play three and three and four and play a Bowmaster. Maybe this is what it looks moving forward. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then I could just easily swap these. But Grist is, Stranger Geist is so good. This card's so good at killing Planeswalkers, so good at killing people. I don't know if I want to move this. Cut this. But this is, uh, this is where we're going to be from now on. Painlands are gone. You, you don't want to be playing Painlands with the One Ring. You need to embrace our new One Ring overlords and uh, stop fighting. Uh, if you're not playing new cards, you're doing magic wrong. Uh, all right. This is where we're going to be moving forward. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the tutorial for this, the deep dive. And uh, I'll see you next time. Uh, bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you later.